you are watching Business Access TV. Business Access. Business Access. Business Access. Business Access. Business Access. You are watching Business Access TV. Business Access TV. Serious. Serious about business. Serious about business. Welcome to day two of the 7th Caribbean Gaming Show and Summit. Business Access TV is here to bring you the highlights. I'm Shelly and Hill. Stay with us. What in your opinion is the potential for gaming in the Caribbean and Central America at this time? Right now within Central America there's a lot of improvement in regulations such as Panama, uh, Costa Rica, Honduras and it's starting to grow. Same thing in the Caribbean. Uh, being more regulated now, Jamaica started to come in with GLI. Um, Aruba has been more regulated. Curacao is really regulated now. So it's growing. It's growing that people understand it's not only Las Vegas now. You can come down to the Caribbean and still gamble safely. What are the specialty areas of Aristocrat Technologies, the company that you're representing here today? Aristocrat is an Australian company. Uh, we're based. Our headquarters is out at Las Vegas, Nevada. Um, my office is based out of Puerto Rico. We cover all the Central America and the Caribbean, providing slot machines, both on participation and for sale, and the system that produces the tickets and everything else and all the player tracking. You know, machines don't use coins anymore now. They use tickets, ticket in, ticket out. So we provide that also. What are your expectations overall of the summit? Well, we are looking forward to have the new clients, maybe partners here, uh, maybe to have machines, I don't know, in participation, which is a good uh, business because if you don't like the machine or if your clients don't like the machine, then we change it. We have uh, technical support also, so that's what we're looking for. Tell us a little bit about Spin Inc. and what you're doing here at the conference today. Uh, we actually, s how do I put this, uh, we save the customers a lot of money with, uh, we do a refurbished machine and we supply parts. So instead of spending $20,000 on a machine, you can get one from us for two to 3000 So if you're doing a 150 machine casino, it's a lot of saving. Mm -hmm. What are your expectations of the conference? Um, it's just good to see the customers say hello to everybody and see how things are moving in Jamaica. So it's always good to see the people, yeah. So let's go into the, uh, the Casino de Montreal. This is a picture of the game zone. I'll show a video in a second. But as you can see here, this is not your typical casino environment. Uh, it has huge screens, it has smoke, it has you know, bumping music, it's got uh, dealer tainers, dealers who are very um, uh, just you know, animated and active and, and actually they're, they're actually entertainers who have been trained how to deal as opposed to the vice versa. Uh, and people come and this, this is something that you would bring someone who's your contemporary to on a Friday night or Saturday night and have a really great time playing. Um, <clears throat> and the dealers themselves are actually you know, thoroughly engaging with the crowd. It's a completely different gaming experience. I walked in to Montreal Casino on a Tuesday in February. It can't be their peak time. And uh, I mean, it's really cold in February in Montreal. And um, this place was packed and there was not a person over the age of 35 in there. Everyone was vaping and doing their thing. And it was just, I mean, it was a whole different scene that I've ever expressed. So I'm gonna play a little video here. Uh, I might need some. Oh, there we go. There's some French and English here, but you'll get the point. La zone ici, c'est un casino dans un casino. C'est 40 bornes interactives sur lesquelles vous pouvez jouer à quatre différents jeux. Ça so you can see cross content. Uh, the screens themselves, they'll put like if there's a big hockey game going on that night, they'll put the hockey on the side around it so that you can bet on the games at the same time. Uh, one dealer is dealing one hand, and everyone's continuing to play it. They do baccarat, they do blackjack, uh, uh, roulette. Uh, you know, when you walk into a casino today, you sit there and you see the, you know, the, the, 
the older demographic sitting there. The, the younger demographic doesn't want to go and sit next to that person and go, yeah, this is a lot of fun. People will game. It's not that millennials hate gaming. You just have to give it to them in an environment that they used to enjoy in their content. Uh, so whether that's providing a venue that is much more exciting or giving it to them the device that their face is already in 90% of the day. I mean, my kids are constantly on their phone. We're constantly telling them to put their phone down. My impression of the zone is it's fantastic. What I think about the zone is it's upbeat and it's a lot of fun and it's high energy. I would hang out here and fortunately I do every weekend. So if you ever do have a chance to uh, get to Montreal uh, or Ottawa, I definitely suggest you go up there and check it out. It's, uh, it's a really a, a great system that they've put together there. And so essentially that is, you know, once again, a system that's doing account-based internet style gaming. It's just in the property. Is it offline or online? Well, I'm dealer uh, in Atlantic City. So this is a really weird term that we use in our industry. Uh, not that we would suggest that the dealers in your casinos are not alive, uh, but for whatever reason, it just means that it's an in-person real dealer. And so you've all seen the, the RNG version of a blackjack game, baccarat game, et cetera. Well, this is actually a real person sitting in the casino at a real table with real cards dealing out. Uh, and you have an interface into that. So this could be your tablet or your computer or your phone. Um, and you can talk uh, to the dealer. You can chat on the left hand and she'll interact with you and respond. Um, you can tip the dealer. Uh, you can select your bet amount and select the game and then they'll play. But what this does is it allows one table now to have an infinite number of seats. You could have thousands of people playing this. And so this is where it comes in, you know, we can't, we as suppliers can't go into a Mocino, for example, and say, hey, we're gonna go set up this system for you. It's just not big enough, right? But you could say, okay, let's install one of these in a regulated oversight studio in Jamaica. You could pick one casino if you want, build around it, make sure that it has all of the oversight and regulations, and then any of the brick and mortar licenses could then say, oh, okay, I will uh, uh, subscribe to this service and therefore you can increase jobs, uh, centralize the cost of it from a server standpoint and deliver it to your nation or if nations make multi-nation compacts, you could say, okay, we're going to do this in Jamaica and serve it to the Bahamas or vice versa and make sure that the regulators are, are speaking to each other so that it is in, in a location that's been done right. But this stuff could be rolled out to the Caribbean if, you, if we can find regulations that allow us to do it in a protected and cost-effective way. Otherwise, this won't make it to the jurisdiction because the cost to put one of these systems up would be way beyond the viability of, for example, a Mocino to put this in if they only have a couple properties. We are now at the Bet Chris booth to find out how you can bet on your favorite sports online. Tamika Arnold is going to tell us more. Hi, Tamika. What's happening at your booth today? Well, what's happening is um, Bet Chris Jamaica is an online race and sports book. We offer every major sport, international horse racing, and now we're on to the local horse racing market as well. How do we get to be a part of that? Well, you can always go online at our website, www.betchrisja.com, and sign up for free. It's all free. And we have a bonus a promo going on. You sign up with $1,000 or more, and you get an additional $1,000 bonus in your account. Is there any limit to the sports that you can bet on? Well, we, it's, it's $100 minimum to bet. So $100 in your account online to bet, and you bet you put in as much as you want. Okay, okay. it depends on the sport that there are limits. The, it, it, it depends on the sport type. Some have limits that are different from the others, depending on the sport. So I can bet on golf, basketball, swimming, even eSports? Even eSports. Tell us a little bit more about that and how eSports is taking its place in the betting arena. Well, I mean... Betting world is changing, as you can all see. Everything is being done online. People are moving away from getting tickets over the counter. You can sit in the comfort of your own home and bet on your cell phone, your laptop, your tablet, whatever device you have, you can do it. Even your, your VR. Yes, your, yes, because yes, we've seen that here at the show. So, I mean, the sky's the limit. You know, and here at Bet Chris, we offer all that and more. You could, well, we also offer betting over the counter because the locals really like getting their tickets over the counter. So we offer that as well. You can also call in your bets 
on our phone line, which is um, 622-3625, our mobile office, and 631-3675, our Kingston office. I mean, I'll be very honest. You know, I started in the gaming sector a little more than midway in my career, in 1993 at the Rio. Never worked in a casino in my life, but I was hired for one reason, protect their money. And so I took that mission on. I went to all the gaming schools. I know all the mathematics. It's pretty simple. If you know what a $42 six pays, and you know the odds on craps or, or roulette, you can get on any game and know the odds, OK? You know the odds, you know what it's going to make. In my world, it's following the money. My best friend in a casino is the finance director, because I'm going to go to him and say, where are we underperforming? And my answer to him is when he tells me, Douglas, right over here, could be a slot area, could be a table game, it might be in a revenue area, it might be one of my restaurants where food costs are too high. Somebody is stealing all the time. And it's kind of a normal thing when we look at numbers. And we did this with the Nevada Gaming Control. Back in 2010, I wrote an article with the Chief of Enforcement, Jerry Markling, who's now retired. He works for his Vice President of Security and Surveillance for the Venetian, the Sands Corporation now. But 67% of all the money stolen in Nevada by criminals, because when someone steals from you, your product is cash, they're criminals. 67% of the time, on the cases that were prosecuted only, that's a big number still, 67%, an employee was involved. That was earth shattering. Because there's another business we have called retail, where we sell things. You know, when I came here, I bought a few things from the Half Moon where I'm staying. And I'll probably buy a few things tomorrow before I go to the airport. In, in the scheme of things, in retail, 37 to 42% of all losses are employees. And in America, retail is $4 trillion. That's how big retail is, $4 trillion. It's 30 to 40 times larger than all the gaming revenue in the world, employees. And those employees are much younger. Those employees aren't vetted, background checks. So we'll talk a little bit about that. But what I want to look at are, when we look at the types of security on your property, you have surveillance and you have security. The only difference between those two departments in surveillance, we can do math. I know what three times three is, and I, would, I know what nine divided by three equals. It's all threes, right? In the scheme of things, your security personnel are just as important. You know, when I was recruited to the Hard Rock in 2010, many of you remember when Bruno Mars got arrested. I'm sorry, that was my fault. First two weeks on the job, the celebrity got caught. Don't you think that helped with gaming control? Because the negative publicity that property had for the two previous years, they were under investigation for their nightclub being criminal, selling drugs, prostitution, organized crime, all of that going on, and their reputation was in the trash. So they hired me, they said, Douglas, go fix this. And I fixed it, I got it done by, I got in there on September 12th, and on December 4th, I was in front of the regulator, not for an interrogation, but they said, Douglas, you have no persons of interest left, and what a person of interest is, is a criminal, okay? All the persons of interest, I had identified them, I caught a few and put them in jail, I reorganized security, made security security again, but they said, Douglas, how did you do that? I said, all I did was sit down and chat with people. 250 security people I had. I visited with all 250. It took me over two weeks, many hours, many shifts. And believe it or not, even I can shut up. See, ask this young man right here. It's hard to get me to shut up. But I can close my mouth and listen. God gave us two ears for our own reason and one mouth. He wants us to listen harder. So I listened. And what I was able to figure out all these people in the room, 100 people, only four of you were bad. So if we have 100 people here, there's four of you in here I could discover. But in reality, it was discovering who my staff in security was good. That's what I was after. I didn't have to worry about all of them. I just worried about this guy in the front row. He's my friend, so I can call him a criminal. He's a sales guy, right? Sign the order. In the scheme of things, that lets me focus on what I want to do. What are my resources? Cameras and technology. So when you think about the difference between security and surveillance, 
as an executive for security and surveillance in my career, because I've worked at many casinos, it's having these two departments work together to get the intelligence for you as an owner, for you as a regulator to trust us and do our jobs. Home is where all the sweetness, silliness, and beauty of life happens. Discover your style and express yourself with furniture from the Ashley Furniture Home Store. Visit any of our two locations at Ligony Kingston or Fairview Montego Bay. Find the most exquisite range of furniture in varying styles to suit your needs. So tell your story with elegant and affordable lounge, bedroom, dining pieces, and more from the Ashley Furniture Home Store. Here at Ashley, this is home. a lot of stick twittingness being consistent and persistent in whatever you're doing that's the bottom line business exists to add value to people's lives and if we're not doing that might as well we pack down the store and just call it a day it's a season three of creating wealth mondays at 8 p.m on business access tv we are serious about the business of real estate, so catch Home Sweet Home Sundays at 4.30 p.m. or if you missed it, check our website at batvja.com. It's season 12 and Wealth Magazine Business Access is here to keep you business savvy. With an impressive mix of some of Jamaica's most inspiring business moguls, we continue to keep Jamaica informed, empowered and ready to dominate. Tune in Sundays at 5 p.m. only on BATV. You're watching Business Access. Business Access. Business Access. Business Access TV. Serious about business. Career Moves has always explored interesting careers, highlighting all you may not have known about them. This season is no different. Coming back to Jamaica, everyone's like, fizzy what? Fizzy who? When you find a bright boy or girl in the class, and say, what are you going to be? The parents say, you have to go be a doctor, you have to go be a lawyer. Nobody says you have to go be a politician. Let me see your hands! Tune in Tuesdays at 8 p.m. on Business Access TV. The Good Life, your trusted source for useful health and wellness information, lifestyle tips for the mind, body and soul. Tune in Tuesdays at 8.30 p.m. on Business Access TV. Business current affairs you can relate to, Frank. Incredible discussion on point with Kalila Reynolds and Dennis Chung dissecting the issues, offering solutions to Jamaica's challenges on point Thursdays at 8 p.m. on Business Access TV. What would the 7th Caribbean Gaming Show and Summit be without the Betting Gaming and Lotteries Commission Virtual Reality Booth? Here we have Jamie Ranston, Director of Interactive Media at CGR Communications, to tell us more. Welcome. Hi, thank you. 
what we are doing here uh, is setting up a, we have set up a booth, um, a virtual reality booth called the BGLC VR Lounge. And what, what we're trying to do is demonstrate how virtual reality works in the gaming and casino world. Um, we have three booths, three sections to the booth. The first one actually gives you uh, a whole experience about it being in a casino yes. um, around slot machines. And um, you actually are immersed into, a, into the world and you can play a slot machine and win virtual cash. Can't take it away, not, not <laughs> right now. Um, the second booth, we're actually doing a whole uh, Game of Thrones. Um, if you know the series, you're, we place you at where we call Castle Black at the wall. Yes. And you get to feel, and, uh, feel the environment and then go up the wall. And you have this whole virtual experience of heights. If you have fear heights, don't do it. Okay, wow, great. <laughs> and then the third, third section of the booth is for really to show you how we do sports betting. So you can uh, look at a horse race, for instance. And in fact, I'm going to invite you to do it. It sounds exciting. And, and in the horse racing, you can bet, be the jockey, and ride the entire track and see how the outcome of the race was from the position of the jockey on the horse. So just a whole different way of experiencing um, um, sports and then sports betting. And tell us how CGR Communications came up with this awesome concept to fit into everything that's happening here today. Sure. Well, what happened is um, BGLC invited us, saw us at one demo um, last year, and um, invited us to actually show uh, the, the community of the gaming community here in the Caribbean uh, what VR was all about. So I did a, a, a presentation yesterday um, where we spoke about the technology, what VR is all about, what augmented reality is about. We gave some on-stage demonstrations which were quite exciting mm -hmm. um, and then basically set up the booth so everybody could experience it for themselves. So CGR, our role was to actually present this to, to the community. Wonderful, and if someone wants to have this in their event, if a company is having a special event and they'd like to have this augmented and virtual reality, certainly CGR is the company to contact. Oh yes, anytime you can contact me directly and, and you'll find me online. Um, it, it's, it's, a, it's a speciality area, so there has to be a good reason behind it. Um, we can invent the, the, the what you see. Um, we have the technology, we have the 360 camera where we can put it in an environment and you can live stream 360 video. Um, we can create the virtual environment as well. In other words, that what it looks like in terms of, uh, you know, you want to be playing, for instance, in this case, poker on Blue Mountain, oh, you know, good. with a view of the city, we can set it up. Well, this sounds really fascinating. It's good to hear you talk about it, but I want to be about it. So can I try? Oh, sure, come, let's go. All right, let's do this. So I want to just go through this. Uh, the, these uh, are the five steps that, uh, that we invite. When we work with clients, um, you know, basically, what, in a nutshell, what, what my company does is we, uh, a brick and mortar operation, whether it's a commercial casino in the United States or a tribal casino, uh, we work in the Bahamas, we work in, in uh, Budapest, Hungary. When we have a client, that, uh, a brick and mortar client that wants to get into either iGaming, social gaming, eSports, virtual sports, uh, whatever vertical, these are the five steps that we use. And we've, we've got this done with system, and I just I wanna share this with you. Uh, and uh, the very, very first one here is um, comparison matrix and vendor selection. And out of everything, this is the most important part that you will do. Um, I can't emphasize this enough. Everything that your initial success or failure will depend on this step. And I just, I'm going to go through this real quick. On the left here, we have this nicer car, and on the right, we have one that is not so nice. But the point is, is that as long as the lights work and, and it passes whatever smog, they're both licensable vehicles. But do you want to drive the one on the right? Now, conversely, you can give somebody the rocket ship, but that also doesn't mean that they're supposed to be driving that as well. And the point I'm making here is that a platform can be, uh, a platform or content, all of these things can be licensable, 
but it doesn't mean that they are best of breed. It doesn't mean that they should be used at all. Uh, if you are, uh, you might actually make your customers quite angry by, and frustrated by having to go through a system that is not created as well as another. So what we do here is on a comparison matrix, um, we'll go through, um, and I don't, when I say we, you should go through, uh, however, let's just say uh, in Jamaica or whatever uh, uh, jurisdiction you're in, you have um, three or five platforms that are licensed. Well, you want to go through them all, and you want to go through them all very thoroughly. And the other part of this is uh, you definitely want to have somebody that has some experience to go through this. And it doesn't need to be me or anyone else in this room. The point is, is that somebody that has operated or has, has intimate knowledge of how these things work needs to go through these systems and go through them meticulously. And these are just some bullet points. Underneath each of these are 10 or 20 different things that need to be checked. Um, you know, we, we have a list that is uh, probably about 120 different items that we go through. But just so for example, software and hardware. What, what games, what content does this system come with? Are they uh, an aggregate where they go and they get content from several different providers? Um, are they only giving out their own content? So, for example, uh, I'll just, not to throw any other, uh, well, I am going to throw some people under the bus. So, um, <laughs> when we look at uh, software, like scientific games or IGT, you're going to get that content, and it's going to be great content, but that's all you're getting. And you're not going to get their content when you use somebody else necessarily. It depends on, on who, who you're going through. Um, the hard, hardware, what is required for you to have? Um, payment processing, can you, does it come with one? Are there terms agreeable? Uh, is that payment processor a license? Do they need to be? Can you plug in your own? Uh, or are you forced to use what they have? Uh, same thing with, um, I'll go over to uh, uh, reporting is the next one. I'm actually supposed to go like that, but I already started down, so we'll, we'll switch it up a little bit. Reporting, uh, what kind of reporting do they give you? It can be a dashboard, and that's great if you are a tribal entity and you have a gas station with 15 slot machines in it, you just kind of need to see a dashboard. If you are an operation, a real operation, you have to look at all sorts of stuff, and they're not all created equal. And at the end of the day, I, this is, an, anyone that's going to tell you about their product is trying to sell it to you. And, they're not, and it doesn't mean that they're bad, it just means that you, you need to have somebody on your side to explain to you what all those things mean and what's missing. And we're now joined by the conference chairman at the 7th Caribbean Gaming Show and Summit, Carol Martinez Johnson. It's great to catch up with you after such a wonderful event. Tell us the significance of the BGLC hosting this event here in Jamaica. Well, this is the first that we've actually had a conference of this type in Jamaica. It shows the relevance of Jamaica to the region, the commitment that we have to regulation of this industry. And it was such a great opportunity for networking. And it was also wonderful that we had Caribbean, 11 other Caribbean countries attending the summit. And how significant was the summit for the Betting, Gaming and Lotteries Commission to host it here in Jamaica this year? Very significant because this is the first that a show of this type has been held in Jamaica. And so for me, I think it's a way of opening investment, showing the, the world what Jamaica has to offer. We actually had 15 regional um, countries attending. So that shows that we're on the map and we seem to be doing something right. Well, certainly it's a significant achievement and we wish you bigger and better for next year. Thank you so much. And that's a wrap for the 7th Caribbean Gaming Show and Summit held right here at the Montego Bay Convention Center. I'm Shelly and Hill for Business Access TV, serious about business.
We may not have been around during Taki's rebellion. We may not have been around when Samuel Daddy Sharp took a stand in leading the Baptist War in 1831-32. Mr. President, we were not around when Paul Bogle and George William Gordon were executed. But we are here today. We will play our part and right many wrongs. And the government did just that by approving a bill which clears certain national heroes and their supporters of criminal charges in the fight against slavery. Today we pay tribute to our national heroes and other courageous men and women who've paved the way for us to live in a free, independent nation. Marcus Garvey has paved the way for us to determine our own destiny in which we validate who we are and what is most important to us. It is he who taught us that the black skin is not a badge of shame but rather a glorious symbol of national greatness. I shall see the black man to see beauty in his own kind and stop bleeding his skin and otherwise looking like what he's not. Encouraging us to heed the lessons of history, unleash the power of the pen, and create a new era of scientific greatness. There is no future for people who deny their past. Mind creates, and as much as we desire a nature, we can have through the creation of our own minds. Liberate the minds of men, and ultimately you will liberate the bodies of men. But in your homes and everywhere possible, you must teach the higher development of science to your children. Jamaica's first national hero was born in St. Anne's Bay on August 17, 1887. Over the next half century and three years, he would work, find love twice, raise his progeny, and leave behind a legacy that resulted in him being conferred with the Order of the National Hero in 1969. A lifetime after the UNIA was a fact, and the People's Political Party had foreshadowed modern self-governance, Marcus Garvey died in 1940 and finally returned home for lasting rest in 1964. God's spirit blessings, I leave you for a while. One love. on this how would you feel if sunday is your regular rest day off from work but just because christmas day falls on that day your boss unilaterally decides you do not deserve an extra day of rest added to that the previous christmas you were entitled to three days off during the season but months before this particular holiday a law was passed giving only two days this is the kind of injustice and ill treatment that was meted out to samuel sharp up to 1830 the enslaved were allowed a three days holiday at Christmas. In February 1831, the House of Assembly passed a law reducing Christmas holidays from three to two, Christmas and Boxing Day only. Since Christmas Day 1831 fell on Sunday, a rest day, Sharp believed that they were entitled to the following Tuesday. A strike ensued. The resistance to work ballooned into what history records as the Christmas Rebellion the ill-fated event that helped pave the way to freedom. Born about 1780, Sam Sharp was the slave of an English lawyer in Montego Bay, St. James. Sharp was a lay deacon of the Birchall Baptist Church and became a leader in the congregation. Samuel, Sam, Daddy Sharp, saw the injustices of slavery and inspired his fellow brothers and sisters to participate in Jamaica's first strike action. There were no labor laws at that time that spoke to the rights or privileges of slaves. Sharp may be considered a forerunner to the labor movement as he fought for the rights of his fellow workers. For this, Samuel Sharp was hanged on May 23, 1832. But as he said, I would rather die upon yonder gallows than live in slavery. 
In 1834, the abolition bill was passed by the British Parliament, and in 1838, slavery was abolished. We now join Prime Minister Andrew Holness for his Heroes Day message. Greetings, my Jamaican family. Today on National Heroes Day, we reflect on the National Heritage Week theme for this year, One Love, One Family, One Heritage. It is a fitting theme as we recognize and appreciate the role of the family as the ultimate partnership and the solid foundation on which strong societies are built. Today, we celebrate our heroes, past and present, who helped to create the bonds of love and unity among all Jamaicans, those who have gone beyond self and acted in the interest and well-being of others, often putting their lives on the line and in some cases, giving their own lives in order to secure a better life for our Jamaican family. Our heroes of the past, Paul Bogle, Nanny of the Maroons, Sam Sharp and George William Gordon, paid the ultimate price in the struggle for freedom, justice, respect and dignity. Marcus Garvey, Norman Manley, and Sir Alexander Bustamante led the struggle for our independence and nationhood. Through their sacrifice, we are a free people, an independent nation, striving to secure justice, peace, and prosperity for all members of our Jamaican family, and doing our part to advance the welfare of the whole human race. Today, we not only celebrate those who have paved the way but those who continue to do their best for Jamaica land we love in service to their fellow citizens. There are countless heroes from all walks of life and in several sectors of business and industry, the public service, medical services, and others who continue to display acts of heroism daily. Jamaicans are truly extraordinary people, and we see constant reminders of our resilience, selflessness, and fortitude. Today, we celebrate Jamaicans like Selena Reed, Grace Allen, and Kimani Anderson for their courage and heroism in ensuring the safety of children at the Walker's Place of Safety who were trapped by fire. We acknowledge the bravery of Sophia Cameron, Verilyn Dowse, and Camille McIntosh, who saved the lives of 22 infants during a fire at the neonatal care unit of the Victoria Jubilee Hospital. We acknowledge Lloyd Nelson, and Javon Lewis, who displayed courage in rescuing five adults and a baby who were trapped inside a building after heavy rains in St. James. They are real examples of ordinary Jamaicans who, when confronted with adversity, have acted with extraordinary selflessness and courage to save the lives of others. Likewise, they are Jamaicans whose sworn duty is to put their lives on the line to protect and to serve the Jamaican family. Today, I want to single out the brave members of our security forces, the Jamaica Constabulary Force and the Jamaica Defense Force. Some have lost their lives in the line of duty, and many have had close calls, suffered serious injuries, such as the soldiers carrying out operations in the hills of St. James, or the policemen on duty in half a tree who responded to a robbery and was shot, but was saved by the grace of God that his phone was in his pocket. It should not go unnoticed that despite the challenges and points of disgruntlement over conditions and other terms of service, the security forces have stepped up to the call to rid Jamaica of the criminal element while upholding the law and protecting the rights of all citizens, even the criminals. The security forces should be commended so far for their conduct and responsible use of extraordinary emergency powers. I wish to commend the men and women of the JCF and the JDF for the work they have been doing in general to combat crime and particularly for their work and conduct in the zones of special operations and in areas declared under the states of public emergency. It is unfortunate that for the past several decades, there has been an erosion of public confidence in some elements of our law enforcement institutions. 
In the extreme, some communities have come to perceive our law enforcement personnel as the enemy. This is never a healthy situation and only gives succor and cover to criminals to act as if they were protectors of the citizens and dispensers of justice. Now, the government is determined to change this. We want every citizen to see our soldiers and law enforcement officers as their protectors, as the people who have enlisted and sworn to give their lives to the service of the Jamaican family, to keep the Jamaican family safe and secure. We want our security forces to be the heroes of our people, the role models of our children, and the symbols of trustworthiness, reliability, security, and peace. I'm seeing signs that this transformation of the image and public perception of our law enforcement institutions is happening right before our eyes. Once the public trust is restored, the fight against crime will be more effective, as there is no greater tool in crime fighting than citizens who cooperate with the police to share information and give up criminals in their communities. In the same breath, there are citizens who, in spite of the prevailing unhelpful social norms, are working with the security forces and are providing useful information in the fight against crime. You are heroes in my book. I encourage every citizen to use the specially created channels to share what you know with law enforcement. As our forefathers found wise and effective ways of resisting oppression and brutality, which eventually led to our freedom, so it is that today, communities that are held hostage and oppressed by criminals must wisely play their part to resist and expose the criminal oppressors. It is the right thing to do. Peace, prosperity, and progress are our true destiny as a people. However, we will not just arrive at our promised destination without actually taking the steps to get there. And we will not reach our destination if we are all looking at each other, afraid to take the first step. This year's day, let us resolve as ordinary citizens to be brave and take the steps to our destiny of peace, prosperity, and progress. Happy Heroes Day to my Jamaican family. And may God continue to bless us and give us the courage to action our destiny. Born in Stony Gut, St. Thomas in the 1820s, he suffered as a slave. He toiled in the hot sun working and praying for the day he could say, yes, freedom come. And when that day came, the day he was free, the plan of becoming fully independent was his next feat. One he accomplished, small farmer, then landowner to being one of 106 persons on the voters list, he was well on his way. So much so, he became a Baptist deacon in the village, a true Jamaican activist, angered by the injustices and oppression faced by the people in St. Thomas by one Governor Edward Eyre. So, he gathered his people and marched onward they did, left, right, left, right, on October 11, 1865, the day of the Morant Bay Rebellion. Over 500 people died, but not in vain. That special day spurred changes in the social and economic conditions of people not only in St. Thomas, but the entire Jamaica. The right excellent Paul Bogle, the man who lived and died for his people on October 24, 1865. A man of honor, a man of truth, our national hero. Marcia Douglas, 
currently the acting colonel of the Charleston Moon community, the chief. Welcome to our museum. So the role of Nanny of the Maroon in Freedom for the Maroon is that she um, provide or she make herself into the diligent leader that one would have been looking for. One with spirituality, one with the zeal of, of moving on, and one with the zeal to protect. And so what she did was to ensure that her people had been served the right way in which um, she ensures that they were no longer in slavery. So what she did was to undermine the British on the plantation with the help of her two sisters or bloodhounds from Cuba to hunt them down. Now later on when the treaty was signed and Jamaica gained independence, it was really a hard tussle for people to recognize Nanny for who she was. Um, thanks to um, recent Colonel, Colonel Harris of Moortown who had made that one of his deepest dream and one of his aim one of the most sustainable things that he was going to work on so that Nanny could have been today the national heroine of Jamaica. Leader of the opposition, Dr. Peter Phillips, here as day message is next. This year's celebration of National Heroes Day coincides with the 80th anniversary of the 1938 Labor Rebellion. In that year, two of our national heroes, the Right Excellent Norman Washington Manley and the Right Excellent Sir Alexander Bustamante, provided the leadership for the Jamaican people, which helped win social and political rights that were denied for a century following emancipation. These included ultimately the right to vote, the right of workers, and all the other rights such as freedom of speech and association, which are today enshrined in our constitutional charter of rights. One of the most important of these rights was the right of workers to organize through their trade unions. This provided the foundation to win many more significant rights and benefits for our workers in subsequent decades. Today, many of these hard-won rights and benefits are at risk. Both Buster Manti and Norman Manley would have vigorously protested today's widespread practice of calling full-time workers independent contractors, thus depriving them of many of their benefits, such as pension rights, maternity benefits, and sick leave, among others, which were won over the years through the collective bargaining process. So, as we recognize and celebrate the achievements of our national heroes, let us commit ourselves to ensuring that the gains secured for the workers are protected. We also must remember that effective nationhood and nation building must be inclusive of all Jamaicans. Progress and prosperity must include everyone, most importantly our workers. We must remember too the importance of volunteerism in nation building all across the country. It is the ordinary Jamaican continuing to give service in their neighborhood watch, their youth clubs, their citizens associations and community centers, or helping the indigent and the elderly that keep our nation together. These are the ones who ensure that as best as possible, we don't leave any Jamaican behind in our quest for progress. We urgently need a renewal of that spirit of volunteerism 
that expanded educational opportunities for our people and which provided the foundation for the community building efforts of Jamaica welfare in the 1930s. Ideally, each and every Jamaican should be a part of their own community development process and should be a beneficiary of the progress of the nation. Fortunately, there are thousands of our ordinary Jamaican citizens whose daily contribution to nation building makes them national heroes and heroines in their own right. We would do well to emulate these Jamaicans who continue to give voluntary service every day. National Heroes Day also provides us with the opportunity to honor our heroes of the past by emulating their commitment and their fixity of purpose to build a better Jamaica. So in honoring our national heroes, let us summon up the strength of Daddy Sharp the bravery of Nanny, the determination of Paul Bogle, the empathy of Bustamante, the vision of Gabi, and the integrity of Norman Manley. Let us all use today to revive our spirits to build a progressive Jamaica that offers opportunity to all our people. May our reflections on this hero's day call us to this action. God bless you and God bless Jamaica. Thank you. George William Gordon, now right excellent George William Gordon, national hero, was born in 1815, the son of a Scottish father and an, and an enslaved Jamaican mother. He got a call to make the world a better place. And for that, he was never forgiven. You should know then that Conditions in, in Jamaica then were just, were just, it's it just unbelievable. People were suffering, 311,000 persons in 1838, enslaved, received their freedom and were just thrown outside. And what George William Gordon did, he bought lands and he cut up the lands and allowed the poor, the dispossessed to have access to the land and his colleagues did not like that. He chastised the governor in meetings right at this space that the governor needed to do more for the people and the governor didn't like it, called him a mischief maker. And this is the space where George William Gordon came to, as it were, give up himself because he heard they were looking for him. And from here, he was taken to St. Thomas where he was tried and hanged on the 23rd of October, 1865. And he reached the Friday, and they hanged him the Monday morning. But before he was hanged, he asked for permission to write a letter to his dear wife, Lucy. He had married this lady, Shannon, Lucy Shannon. He married her, and he asked that he could write a letter, and they allowed him to write the letter. That would have been Sunday night, night early Monday morning. He wrote the letter to say that he was innocent. And if anything that he did was, that was bad, was to help poor people. Roxborough, Manchester is a museum dedicated to telling the story of the life and work of the Right Honourable Norman Washington Manley. You will find it nestled on a hillside at the place of his birth. Once inside, you will be captivated by intriguing information on his years as a soldier, athlete, scholar, statesman and advocate.
At the museum, you can read about how Norman Manley supported the cause of the workers at the time of the labor troubles in 1938. His advocacy took on a more defined role when he rose to lead the newly formed People's National Party, PNP, in 1938 and remained as president until his retirement in 1969. Norman Washington Manley became chief minister after the 1955 election and premier in 1958, the same year Jamaica joined the West Indies Federation. A faithful supporter of the Federation, Manley put the issue to the people, holding a referendum in 1961 to decide if the country should remain in the Federation. The answer was no, and Manley arranged for Jamaica's orderly withdrawal. Manley kept himself busy with the things he was very passionate about, leaving behind an extensive legacy, such as his role in obtaining universal adult suffrage in 1944 and developing a new constitution for independent Jamaica. And so, in 1954, he led efforts to secure executive powers for elected representatives. It was also under Norman Manley's leadership that Jamaica achieved full internal self-government in 1959, a precursor to political independence that would come three years later. Manley's dedicated service to Jamaica earned him the Order of National Hero in 1969. Norman Manley died on September 2, 1969. Welcome to Blenheim, birthplace of a hero. Sir Alexander Bustamante was the first Prime Minister of Jamaica. He was born on the 24th of February 1884 and died 6th of August 1977, but still lives on in history. Here at his museum, you can get the rich history of him. So please feel free to come and enjoy. We are open from nine to five weekdays, Monday to Friday. So please come on in and get the rich history. All right, you can call the Jamaica National Heritage Trust if you want some more information. Before God and all mankind, I pledge the love and loyalty of my heart. The wisdom and courage of my mind and the strength and vigor of my body. In the service of my fellow citizens, I promise to stand up for justice, brotherhood and peace. To work diligently and creatively, to think generously and honestly. and play her part in advancing the welfare of the whole human race. Our Heroes Day edition of Jamaica Magazine has come to an end. We hope you were left inspired to play your part to make Jamaica the island of choice. And it starts with you working in your little corner with other persons working in their little corners of the rock to chart a course for the future. Happy Heroes Day, Jamaica. One love. On behalf of the entire team here at the JIS, I'm Adrian Atkinson. Thanks for watching. This has been a production of the Jamaica Information Service, the voice of Jamaica. Ambo Trendrickson, you're watching BA TV, serious about business. You're watching Business Access TV. Business Access. Business Access. Business Access. Business Access. You are watching Business Access TV. Business Access TV. Serious. Serious about business. Serious about business.
Business Access TV comes to you tonight from the Jamaica Pegasus Hotel, where we're covering the 36th annual Jamaica Chamber of Commerce Awards ceremony under the theme People, Purpose and Passion. I'm Candy King. Stay tuned. The president of the JCC joins me now, Mr. Larry Watson. Now, for those who don't know, tell us about the role of the JCC. Well, what the JCC is, we are a lobby group and we facilitate our members. So what we, we are like an intermediary between the government and regional institutions and our members. So if any of our members have issues, they have challenges, we would be the go-between to ensure that these challenges are brought to the table and resolved and really what we do is ensure that the government and the in power understands what it takes to make business profitable and to grow because private sector is an engine of growth so we cover all areas of commerce and we facilitate our members to be the engine of growth. Now, you spoke about facilitating those things how would you say you encourage growth or profitability in your members? Well, one of the things we do, we, we have a lot of seminars. Whenever a new legislation comes up, let it be health and safety, let it be new accounting standards, whatever the issues are, we hold a, significant, a lot of seminars to ensure that our members know what's going on, they are operating properly and efficiently. So we, we do a lot of training and a lot of uh, just exposing our members to what the new regulations are both locally and internationally because sometimes things change on an international forum because we're a member of the International Chamber of Commerce we have the links to maybe a hundred countries and so that's how we help our members. Wearing multiple hats tonight, as she usually does, in the capacity of nominee and sponsor, Naomi Garrick has joined me. Naomi, talk to me about being nominated for this incredible award. Well, we're so we're extremely humbled and just proud as a company to be nominated for JCC Award. We've sponsored the event for the last three years, and we've always admired all the winners, the nominees. It's such a celebration of teamwork and excellence and so just to be even considered for nomination is really a big deal for us so we're just very excited to be here and to be a part of the excitement as you said wearing two hats wearing three hats actually uh, but we're really really excited to be here right, and what's your overall impression of the event well so far I mean it, it is a celebration of excellence and we just arrived so as I said it's a little bit different for me because today I'm here not just doing the PR but as a nominee so it's very exciting I'm here doing an interview I, I'm normally behind the camera so it's, it's a beautiful event um, well executed by main event and we're just excited for the rest of the proceedings for today how important is it for you as a small business to be recognized by an agency like the JCC it's absolutely amazing um, one of my driving forces just as an individual is to inspire others with my journey and for us to be such a small agency and to be recognized in this way by the Jamaica Chamber of Commerce, I believe it really speaks volumes for us as a company. And I believe even myself as an entrepreneur. And so I just want to be able to inspire others, you know, to know that they can achieve anything in this world. They just have to really put in the work and the effort. And we're just very proud to be here. Alex Morris is with me now from Ezeram. Now I need to ask you, what is your company about? Tell us what you do. Uh, basically, Ezeram is a digital media marketing company. So we specialize in social media and content creation okay. for a number of brands. All right, so you guys are also nominated for Entrepreneur of the Year Award. What would it mean to you if you guys won? Well, I mean, it's our humbling next feeling already that, you know, just to be nominated. So if we win, I mean, that's, <laughs> that's also a plus. And what, what's your overall impression of the event so far? Um, so far, I'm impressed. Um, I haven't been to many of these type of events, but the few that I've been to, definitely I feel the organization and, you know, feel the love among all of the, nomin the nominees as and well. I'm sure being a nominee helps. Yes, it does help. <laughs> well, good luck tonight. Thank you.
Nayoka Smiley, Spa Manager of Adam and Eve, and they are nominated tonight. Congratulations for the Entrepreneur of the Year Award. How does it feel to be nominated? We're absolutely thrilled and excited to be nominated for this award. Now, I wanted to ask you, how do you feel events like this? How important are events like this to recognize um, young entrepreneurs or entrepreneurs in general? Well, I think it's very important because um, small businesses sometimes don't get the recognition that they deserve. And by hosting these events, it shows that we are being paid attention to, we are adding to the development of the country and therefore these awards motivate other small entrepreneurs as well to come into the business and just maintain their, their, their presence and just keep doing a good job. Catherine Kennedy from Grace Kennedy is with me now and they are nominated tonight for Best in Chamber in the Extra Large category. What does it mean to you guys? What would it mean to win this category tonight? Well, Grace Kennedy has been a member of the Jamaica Chamber of Commerce since we were founded in 1922 because the Chamber of Commerce has been a part of Jamaican business community for over 200 years. So to be nominated is a great honor given who we're nominated with but also to be recognized for the work that we do, the contribution that we make, the effort that we're putting in to grow our company and to grow the Jamaican economy. It's also would be a thrill for us to, to actually win. Now, what is on the forefront right now for Grace Kennedy? Well, there's a lot going on. <laughs> I mean, I don't know how we're going to synopsize it for you, but um, Grace Kennedy is four years away from being 100 years wow. old. So we're looking at ourselves right now and saying, wow, we've made it this far. How can we even get better? How can we not just think about the next 100 years, but 100 years after that? So we're really looking at the long-term future of the company. And of course, in the context of that, how we can then transcend and transform and be an even better company and an even be better representative for Jamaica. Finally, very lightly, what is your overall impression of the event tonight? Well, I am actually a director of the Jamaica Chamber of Commerce okay. and because Grace Kennedy has been very closely involved with the Chamber, as I said before, for a long period of time. And this is always a highlight of the year for the, in the corporate calendar. I look forward to seeing my friends, some people that you don't get to see as often as you'd like, but also to celebrate others that have been doing really well. Ambassador Alun Dombe Asamba and Andre Gooden, they now join me from COK and they are nominated in the Best of Chamber category, in the Medium category, right. Now, how does it feel to be nominated tonight? It's, it's awesome. It, it, it really is. I mean, now that you have asked me that, I realize, I finally realize that we have been nominated. And so um, I'm very proud on behalf of COK Sodality. And the truth is, whether we win or not, it has been an honor to be um, recognized in this way. You know, you're the business development manager. What can you tell me about what's on the forefront now for you guys? Well, it's all about making the lives of our members a lot easier. Talk about convenience. It's about making our services more available to them, not just in the brick and mortar of the locations, but electronically and almost globally. So really it's about convenience for our members because we work for our members. They're very vociferous, very demanding, and we try as much as we can to facilitate them in all aspects of financial services. No, I've been asking everybody this tonight. How important would you say is an event like this to recognize businesses, entrepreneurs in Jamaica? I think it's important, you know, because we slug away every day at what we do. And there are some up-and-coming organizations that would look at the persons, the, 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 the companies that have been nominated and say, I would like to aspire to be nominated. Because last year when we were here, I actually sat there and said, I wonder if we could ever be nominated. You know? No, I didn't actually say, how come? Because I didn't know at the time what the criteria was or anything. And I said to myself, I wonder if we would ever be nominated. And then surprisingly, we got a call to say that we were. So I think it's, it's, it's good because it allows, well, one, it, it, it brings some focus to a wider audience on what you are doing, and also it gives other companies something to aspire to. The guest speaker for tonight, Ambassador Courtney Rattray, is with me now. Now, you are also the permanent representation of Jamaica to the United Nations. For those who don't know, tell us a little about your role. 
Well, it's really just I'm the Jamaican ambassador to the UN. We call ambassadors to the UN permanent representatives. But in many of our countries, when you say you're the permanent representative, it doesn't really mean anything to anybody. But it's just a title that they give us when we are accredited not to a country. Before this, I was ambassador of Jamaica to China. But now I'm not an ambassador to a country. I'm an ambassador to a multilateral organization. So the designation is a bit different. Okay, and about your message tonight, can you give us a little summary, so to speak? Well, you know, I'm involved in an initiative in partnership with the ambassador from Canada. We decided to form a group, which is now 60 or so UN ambassadors that meet on a regular basis with the private sector to see how we can encourage them really, to put it crudely, to part with their money, to fund the implementation of the Sustainable Development Goals, which is a landmark development agenda that was passed by all UN member states in September of 2015. We passed it, we, had, we committed to doing certain things in a whole host of areas, all related to economic and social development, but we passed it without knowing how we were going to fund it. So we have come together as a subset of the UN membership to really talk to the business community and to the investment community about how we can encourage them to invest in projects in developing countries that will implement the Sustainable Development Goals. Given your experience, how important would you say the JCC is in developing businesses in Jamaica? I think all business associations are tremendously important. And just look at this event tonight. I look at this event, the centerpiece of which is the award ceremony as an opportunity for the established business community in Jamaica to reach out to young entrepreneurs, not just through membership, but through encouraging them in so many different ways. And like they're doing tonight, you know, recognizing their achievements and giving them the sort of support and mentorship and guidance that they need to become Jamaica's business leaders of tomorrow. Ashton Smith, committee chair for the JCC, is with me now. Now, Diane, how did you guys select this year's theme, which is people, purpose, and passion? Yes. Well, let me tell you, it was just an amazing thing. It just came out of literally the air. And why? Because we thought how apt it would be because the crossroads of being a business excellent business has to have the cross section of people, purpose and passion. And so it was very simple and once it came together it was just an amazing thing. Now how do you guys select the nominees and then ultimately the winners? So naturally what we do, we just send out to our membership and we also ask them to bring in their nominations. Who do they think would be deserving of each award? And pretty much that's what it is. A lot of the companies, however, are self-nominated. It is just such an elite award. And it does good for brand equity. It does good for brand recognition. And so a lot of the companies want to achieve this because of what it does literally for the bottom line. All right, then. What are you most looking forward to tonight? Well, I'm looking forward to, because I'm also Red Stripe, and Red Stripe is nominated for Extra Large, and interestingly, being the chairman, I don't even know who the winners are. So I will be as excited as everybody else, and that's what I'm looking forward to. As well, looking forward to, seriously, um, the Ambassador Courtney Ratchery and the discourse that he will bring around, you know, the work that he's doing with the UN. We take a short break, but when we come back, we head inside for the formalities.
the end of the year draws nigh and the celebrations begin, let us add some magic to the festivities with our BATV Christmas mix. Why settle for blah when you can have fa la 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 la? 60 advertising spots, 10 crawl spots. This $1.6 million package is all yours for only $45,000. Don't wait. Contact our sales team today and take advantage of this incredible offer. Our gift to you. BATV Christmas Mix. Offer valid until December 31, 2018. We are back with another exciting, innovative and inspiring season. It takes a lot of stick to itiveness, being consistent and persistent in whatever you're doing. That's the bottom line. Business exists to add value to people's lives. And if we're not doing that, might as well we pack down the store and just call it a day. It's a season three of Creating Wealth, Mondays at 8 p.m. on Business Access TV. There's only one recommendation for funding that is ever going to come from me, and that is funding from a bank. This is the cost to build, and it includes every nail and screw for the building. Our motto is building communities, building a nation. Get in the know with the world of real estate with Business Access TV's Home Sweet Home, Sundays at 4.30 p.m. Having a corporate event, seminar, awards show, conference, products launch, workshop or expo? Business Access TV is here to showcase your event. Contact our sales department at 908-0919, 906-6357 or 908-2775 for more information. Business Access TV, serious about business. Cameo brings the creative industries to life. Lighting creatives in different fields each week. Art. My life surrounds art. I breathe that eat art. Fashion. Food. Without the customer, we're nothing but four walls. Music. Film. Cameo. Only on Business Access TV. The Good Life. Your trusted source for useful health and wellness information, lifestyle tips for the mind, body, and soul. Tune in Tuesdays at 8.30 p.m. on Business Access TV. Welcome back to the 36th annual Jamaica Chamber of Commerce Awards Ceremony. Right now, we head to the stage. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Dania Beckford. And this evening, I have the distinct pleasure and honor to co-host the JCC's 36th annual Dinner and Award Ceremony. And I promise I will do so purposefully. <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, good evening. I'm Garth Williams, and I too have the distinct pleasure of co-hosting with Dania for this evening's event. Tonight, we celebrate these people and companies that are excelling in their pursuit of purpose and who have blazed the trail in the areas of financial performance, business growth, and innovation throughout the year. To the nominees, good, good luck. luck. We now invite the JCC president, Mr. Larry Watson, to bring opening remarks. The theme of tonight's 36th staging of the JCC Award Ceremony and Dinner is People, Purpose, and Passion. Passion is what motivates you to do something. Purpose is the framework that binds people around a cause for which they are passionate. Passion and purpose are based in people. All great achievements start with passion, and passion is in fact what fuels everything. 
That shared position, that shared belief is what motivates people, gives them the sense of belonging, and excites them about accomplishing the same mission and being a part of the movement. The success of your mission depends on people you partner with. If you don't have a team or partners who share your vision, your dreams, and your goals, you will not be able to reach your full potential. Success is a team spirit. Tonight, we are honored to have our colleagues from Team PSOJ and Team JMEA with us. In the words of Nelson Mandela, there is no passion to be found plain small in settling for a life that is less than the one you are capable of living. The theme, passion, purpose, and people shows our commitment as an organization to celebrate the passion in individuals and organizations and to encourage others to live their own passionate, purpose-built drive. This is because we know that no company or organization or individual can truly thrive and be all that they were purposed to be without passion. In Jamaica and around the world, we find that companies that stand out are those that are able to withstand changing economies, policies, and technologies, and those that have passionately ignited their employees and themselves to look beyond the boundaries and overcome the barriers to creatively pursue their mandate and their mission. Tonight, we are pleased to share with you some of Jamaica's finest standout companies who will be recognized for excellence in meeting their corporate goals and objectives over the past year in the following award categories. Best of Chamber, Extra Large, Large, Medium, and Small, the Entrepreneurial Award, the Individual Chamber Member Award, and the JCC Yellow Marketing Excellence Award. In selecting a winner from each category, the overall performance of the company during the year of 2017 have been evaluated. This includes areas such as corporate and social responsibility, financial performance, business growth, and innovation. These awards will recognize and reward the efforts of the nominated companies and their staff. We wish all our nominees tonight the best of luck. You are all considered to be winners simply for being nominated. Continue. Continue to passionately pursue your purpose. Continue to ignite your team to do the same and continue to inspire Jamaica and the world by your actions that bring growth for your company and our nation, Jamaica land we love. Thank you. Now, ladies and gentlemen, it's time for us to get down into our awards because that's why we are certainly here. And we are going to commence with the Entrepreneur Individual Nominees. Now, this nomination is open to both members and non-members of the JCC. The Chamber believes that those individuals who've taken the risk to start a business and cultivate it are and will be the real engines of growth for this country and we must do our part to recognize them for their efforts. So tonight, ladies and gentlemen, we commend and highlight our five nominees. Yeah, the nominees are... First up, Adam and Eve Day Spa. Our next nominee, AIM Educational Services. SC Rom. Garrick Communications. TIC, the Joan Duncan School of Entrepreneurship, Ethics, and Leadership. I now invite Garth Walker, Managing Director of Business Access TV to present tonight's first award. Drum roll, please. The award goes to Esiram Limited. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, congratulations to Esiram. And of course, courtesy of Red Stripe, SRM, you're getting a gift basket. And also, you get a gift from Adam and Eve Day Spa. I 
I invite JCC President Larry Watson to present the Individual Chamber Member Award. And the award goes to Warren McDonald. <laughs> Mr. Warren McDonald is JCC's immediate past president, having served on the executive committee since 2008. Mr. McDonald's admirable professional career has seen him as the chief executive officer and managing director of Berger Paints for 20 years, between 1994 and 2013, and having served as Berger Paints' chief financial officer and company secretary for the previous 13 years. Mr. McDonald is an active member of the executive committee and has spearheaded the reposition of the JCC Samir Yunus Foundation. He's a member of the ACORN committee, which works behind the scenes to solve issues between private and public sector bodies. He's an integral member of the CARICOM Review Commission, chaired by Jamaica's former prime minister, Bruce Golding. I now invite Shani Jaja, director of marketing at Yellow Media, to make the presentation to the JCC Yellow Marketing Ex Excellence Award. <laughs> Drum roll, please. Because the award of the JCC Yellow Marketing Excellence goes to the Jamaica Public Service Company Limited. Don't touch that dial more from the JCC's 36th annual award ceremony when we come back. The Nissan X Trail with all mode eye technologies. No matter what the road throws at you. Your story starts here. Ready for cable for as little as $100? Ready for no monthly cable bill? Ready for 10 TV channels absolutely free? Then pick up our Ready TV box at authorized stores for $4,500. Hook it up to your TV set, then top it up with Ready Credit for 1, 7, or 30 days. Buy now and get $1,000 free Ready Credit and start watching your favorite shows. Pick it up, hook it up, top it up. Ready TV, prepaid cable TV when you're ready. Now serving Kingston and St. Catherine, limited time offer while stocks last. Conditions apply. Cameo brings the creative industries to life. Delighting creatives in different fields each week. Art. My life ruins art. I breathe that eat art. Fashion. Food. Without a customer, we're nothing but four walls. Music. Film. Cameo. Only on Business Access TV. Business current affairs you can relate to. Frank, credible discussion, on point, with Kalila Reynolds and Dennis Chung, dissecting the issues, offering solutions to Jamaica's challenges, on point, Thursdays at 8 p.m. on Business Access TV. The Good Life, your trusted source, for useful health and wellness information, lifestyle tips for the mind, body, and soul. Tune in Tuesdays at 8.30 p.m. on Business Access TV. It's season 12, and Wealth Magazine Business Access is here to keep you business savvy. With an impressive mix of some of Jamaica's most inspiring business moguls, we continue to keep Jamaica informed, empowered, and ready to dominate. Tune in Sundays at 5 p.m. only on BATV. You're watching Business Access. Business Access. Business Access. Business Access TV. Serious about business.
Go For God Family Church. Today's message is for those of you who thought that Jesus was finished. Inspiring messages. I'm here to tell you today that you are excellent. God is excellent. Empowerment from biblical motivation. To be glorified means to endow with authority. A woman is a powerful creative being. Join Pastor Christopher Morgan and the Go For God team as we go for God. a corporate event, a seminar, awards show, conference, products launch, workshop or expo? Business Access TV is here to showcase your event. Contact our sales department at 9080919, 9066357 or 9082775 for more information. Business Access TV, serious about business. Thanks for staying with us. We continue our coverage of the JCC's 36th annual award ceremony. Tonight's guest speaker is no stranger to Jamaica, Ambassador E. Courtney Rattray. He's a permanent representative of Jamaica to the United Nations, a post to which he was appointed on June 1, 2013. I commend the JCC's commitment to the creation of a business supportive environment as well as the work that you are undertaking to support women-owned businesses. I also wish to congratulate the 2017 awardees and those other nominees who have been selected for their outstanding achievements in various fields. I'm aware of the emphasis that the Chamber places on celebrating excellence, as well as in encouraging young entrepreneurs. I believe it is both fitting and timely that this year's award ceremony is taking place under the theme, People, pa Passion and Purpose. This is at a time while the United Nations is actively engaged in implementing an ambitious agenda for sustainable development, at the core of which are five key themes, people, planet, prosperity, peace, and partnership. In 2015, all 193 UN member states committed to this universal sustainable development agenda that is comprehensive in scope and grounded in human rights. At its core are 17 Sustainable Development Goals, or SDGs as they are commonly known. They range from the commitment to eradicating poverty which I have to say is our greatest global challenge, to achieving universal education, combating climate change, and accessing affordable and sustainable energy. There are other goals that cover issues such as health, gender, e economic growth, and building resilient infrastructure. This global developmental agenda, which countries have committed to achieving by the year 2030, represents the most comprehensive and integrated development plan that the world has ever devised. One in which people are placed firmly at the center of sustainable development. Jamaica was fully engaged in creating this new framework, working alongside CARICOM and our other small island developing state allies. It is fortuitous that we had already established, as you know, our own long-term national development plan, Vision 2030, which sets out our aspiration and strategies for, I'm sure you've heard the phrase, making Jamaica the place of choice to live, work, raise families, and to do business. You know, a few years ago, one would say the words sustainable development, and immediately it would conjure up images of the environment. For example, are we recycling? Are we keeping our beaches clean? What about air pollution from industrial activity? How do we tackle deforestation and so forth? 
but the world came to a realization that such a unidimensional view of development was faulty, as it resulted in development being pursued in a siloed approach. It pitted industry against the environment and business versus labor versus government versus civil society. This zero-sum approach only led to retarded growth, increased inequality, and perpetual underdevelopment. For business, there doesn't have to be a binary choice between embracing profit and principle. Value creation for business can also yield gains for society and for the environment. So today, when we speak of sustainable development, we are talking about an approach that provides sustainable progress across the whole spectrum of human and planetary activity, economic, social, and environmental. I was invited to focus my remarks this evening on a particular initiative related to the sustainable development agenda in which Jamaica is involved and where the private sector has an important role to play. It involves the financing of the SDGs. You know, as I contemplated this ambitious global sustainable development agenda, it became clear that although a conceptual financing framework had been developed, no practical action was being taken to close the financing gap associated with implementing the SDGs. And that's a bit surprising. 193 countries negotiated this. And after we did it and congratulated ourselves, then some bright person said, OK, how are we going to fund this now? It is estimated that the current financing gap for achieving the SDGs in low and middle income countries stands at between three and five trillion, not billion, trillion dollars per year, US dollars per year. And this figure rises to five to seven trillion per year when we include high income countries. The resources that are available to governments, for example, through tax collection and from development finance institutions are obviously not enough to implement this agenda. To give you an idea of the magnitude of the task, the capital required is 35 times net larger than total net official development assistance, which reached a new high of $146 billion last year. We will therefore need to find a way to incentivize capital markets and global investors to play their part as traditional means of financing alone will obviously not suffice. I believe that even as we pursue our strategic economic and political interests on the international stage, we must never lose sight of the fundamental principles that underpin Jamaica's diplomacy. These principles are contained in the UN Charter and are also to be found in our own Charter of Fundamental Rights and Freedoms. For me personally, however, I mean, even at this late stage of my life, I still seek to uphold the principles I was taught as a young boy that are embodied in our National Pledge, which states in part, I promise to stand up for justice brotherhood and peace, to work diligently and creatively, to think generously and honestly, so that Jamaica may, under God, increase in beauty, fellowship and prosperity, and play her part in advancing the welfare of the whole human race. Stay with us, we'll be right back with more from the Jamaica Chamber of Commerce's 36th Annual Award Ceremony. Growth Tech is making connectivity like oxygen. Wherever you see the Growth Tech free Wi-Fi, feel free to connect. Watch, connect, and go. Allowing you to chat, check, browse, and email securely. So when you're on the go and need to connect with friends, family, or a team member, or just stay updated, look for Growth Tech's free Wi-Fi. Growth Tech, making connectivity like oxygen. You see island I wear uh, them are the best thing in the island I swear uh, Everywhere in the island I hear uh, Everybody with a eye problem Them a talk about the place named island I wear Them a say I, 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 island I wear Them a say I, 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 island I wear uh. 
Everybody with a eye problem, them at about Island I we are. Island I wear offers free eye testing every day, all day, at all locations, island wide. Conditions apply. I, 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 Everybody with a eye problem, them at about Island I we are. Caring Hands Season 3 continues to effect change in a changing environment. Many of us were raised by grandmothers, right? So, I mean, we know the wisdom that these people have. Going Beyond Business I think the leaders of today are our leaders of tomorrow. And um, with the proper education, we'll have very good leadership coming from that. That's season three of Caring Hands, creating change and shaping lives every Sunday at 5.30 p.m. on Business Access TV. This is Weekend Business Report. Economic windfall. Unsecured loans. Alleged corruption. The result no, 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 no. follows the closure. If they made this investment, Mr. Brokers will strive to increase revenues. He sought some answers. Financial meltdown. Here are the week's final Here's Garth. News Roundup. Camille. 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 Camille, it's back to you. That's Weekend Business Report with me, Camille Gale. Saturdays and Sundays. <laughs> We're taking you beyond our shores, across the region and around the world. Every week, BATV gives you in-depth reporting on the major stories that gripped headlines in the Caribbean and on the international scene. Join us Sundays for This Week Abroad. Business Access TV, serious about business at home and abroad. It's season 12 and Wealth Magazine Business Access is here to keep you business savvy. With an impressive mix of some of Jamaica's most inspiring business moguls, we continue to keep Jamaica informed, empowered and ready to dominate. Tune in Sundays at 5 p.m. only on BATV. You're watching Business Access. Business Access. Business Access. Business Access TV. Serious about business. Life, your trusted source for useful health and wellness information, lifestyle tips for the mind, body, and soul. Tune in Tuesdays at 8.30 p.m. on Business Access TV. As the end of the year draws nigh and the celebrations begin, let us add some magic to the festivities with our BATV Christmas mix. Why settle for blah when you can have fa la 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 la? 60 advertising spots, 10 crawl spots. This $1.6 million package is all yours for only $45,000. Don't wait. Contact our sales team today and take advantage of this incredible offer. Our gift to you. BATV Christmas Mix. Offer valid until December 31, 2018. The annual Best of Chamber Award, which recognizes performance, innovation, and best practices, had 12 nominees this year in four categories. These awards are presented to outstanding member companies that have met the highest levels of sector performance and best practices in the areas of corporate leadership, product and service quality, human resource development, marketing innovation, corporate citizenship, and sustained growth. This year's judging was a close call as the judges were impressed with steady profits of the nominees, whom they praised for continuing to make a significant contribution to the economic vitality of Jamaica in an increasingly tough, competitive environment. The lack of industrial action in any of the nominated companies during 2017 was another area which impressed the judges. The nominees indicated high level of commitment to, commitment to responsible business practices, which included in improving employee benefits and training opportunities, as well as the introduction of safety and security measures. I now invite Dr. Dennis Howard, General Manager, Radio Services, RGR Glena Communications Group, to present the Best of Chamber Small Award.
the Best of Chamber Small Award goes to Carib Cash Jamaica Limited. The judges were impressed with the growth metrics of this firm over the short period that it has been in existence in Jamaica, notwithstanding the... And of, and of course, each award winner receives a gift basket courtesy of Red Stripe. And of course, from Adam and Eve Day Spa. The Best of Chamber Medium Award goes to... COK Sodality Cooperative Credit Union. COK's engagement with its membership and its success in reactivating more than 15,000 dormant accounts impressed the judges. They, commend, they commended the policy of staff and membership development as indicators of strong leadership. COK's support for the activities of the Jamaica Chamber of Commerce also earned them high marks. Ladies and gentlemen, give it up for COK Solidarity Cooperative Credit Union. And keep the applause going for COK. And they will also receive a gift basket courtesy of Red Stripe. And the gift package courtesy of Adam and Eve Day Spa. There's enough beer to go around. You can organize a group outing to Adam and Eve Day Spa. Take a day off. I know, right? Best of Chamber Large Award goes to Nestle Jamaica Limited. And they have a large cheering section. That's right. I think they've made the most noise in this house all night long. Nestle's business performance, its expansion and innovation were the key areas which caught the judges' attention. The company also scored top marks for its contribution to the development of human capital through its youth outreach program. That youth outreach program has put nearly 3,000 students through the rigors of preparing for the job market. Congratulations, Nestle! Give it up for Nestle! I know who it is. The Best of Chamber Extra Large Award goes to... Grace Kennedy Limited. The judges were particularly impressed by Grace Kennedy's attention to its corporate social responsibility through activities which have had a positive impact on the community. The long-running sponsorship of the annual Boys and Girls Athletics Championship was commended. While applauding good corporate governance and how well Grace Kennedy has communicated its values through its participatory staff programs and community engagement, its business performance and relentless push in the new markets were also seen as very positive. Ladies and gentlemen, the Best of Chamber Extra Large Award, Grace Kennedy Limited. And of course, Group CEO Don Webby receives a gift package, a celebratory gift package, courtesy of Red, Red Stripe. Stripe. <laughs> and for all the long hours and hard work, they're heading off to Adam and Eve Day Spa they are. to be rejuvenated. Ladies and gentlemen, Diane Ashton Smith. She's a director at the Jamaica Chamber of Commerce and the chairperson for the awards planning committee. Please make her welcome. On behalf of the Jamaica Chamber of Commerce, I'd like to close the evening by first congratulating our 2017 nominees and winners. 
As you can see from the caliber nominations, this year was extremely competitive, which I'm sure created quite a difficult task for our judges to land their decisions. Every single nominee was in their own right a winner, delivering business excellence, not just through achieving superior business results, but also through creating value for stakeholders while also developing and strengthening their leadership, their strategic imperatives, their innovation pipeline, customer focus, processes, and their people. Your collective passion and drive for business excellence is playing a critical role in making Jamaica a place of choice to live, let's say it together, work, raise families, and do business. So we are now sending huge congratulations to the COK family for winning Best in Chamber for the Medium category. What does this win mean for the company? It means a lot to us. I want to just credit the staff with this because they worked very, very hard last year to bring us to a point where we could be considered for this. And I want to thank the membership of COK who has faith in this organization and who understands that we are a members organization, that we belong to everybody who saves a dollar in COK. So it really means a lot to us. Well, congratulations again to you and the team. Thank you. Thank you, Thank Thank you, very, you very much. much. Winners all around, JPS won the Marketing Excellence Award. So talk to me about the marketing campaign that you guys did that won the award. Well, we focused on our Power Smart Energy Challenge, and it was really JPS teaching customers how to save energy, which a lot of people think is counterintuitive, but it was really the way for us to help people to afford their electricity bill and enjoy the things that they've earned and love. So um, we're really happy that everybody else thought it was a great idea too and loved it enough to, to award us. Andre was actually project manager on, on, that, on that particular project. And we're just really excited that somebody's acknowledging marketers. Yeah. That was my next question. What, the, what does the win mean for the company? It means a lot because, you know, JP doesn't even always have a marketing department, you know, the, and a, a big question that we always face is what are you marketing? And so now I think people get the idea, we're a marketing service, we're a marketing empowerment, we're a marketing energy solutions, and so um, we're very, quite valid in the marketing space, and we are really grateful to Yellow for acknowledging the hard work and creativity that goes into powering lots of Jamaica's industries. Well, congratulations again. Thank you. Alex Marisi from SIRAM, they won the Entrepreneur Award. What does the win mean for the company? Well, it just means that we now have to, you know, do better, do more things. Um, we're out there now, so we just have to do better and bigger things moving forward. A man who needs no introduction, Don Webby from Grace Kennedy. They won the award for Best in Chamber for the Extra Large category. Don, what would you say that this win means for the company? Uh, it means a lot, and I can tell you, it means a lot for the whole of Grace Kennedy. Every 2,000 employees of Grace Kennedy. I think the last time when we won, in 2013, and we went back to office, there was this motivating high, you know, that we have won. And the Jamaica Chamber of Commerce, as I said in my interview, is um, one of the most respected private sector organizations in Jamaica. So being recognized by them means a whole lot to Grace Kennedy. And it motivates us to continue to do well for Jamaica and to realize our vision of being a global consumer group. Okay, all right, what would you say is next for you guys? What's on the forefront now? Next for us is to continue to expand. Um, we're going to be expanding in manufacturing in Jamaica with a new factory. Um, we're going to continue to expand in all the markets, USA, Canada, and, and the UK. Um, Ghana is doing pretty well also, and the Europe is also doing pretty well. So we're going, to, we're going to focus on exporting from Jamaica to those markets, but we are very happy. One of the things that we have as part of our objectives also, in terms of our covered social responsibility, Grace Kennedy through our foundation, we sent 500 children from the inner city to school, to high school and to university, and our objective is that we want to double that by 2022. So that's really something that we're looking at um, because, you know, as we would say, what is good for Jamaica is good for Grace Kennedy. And we believe that with a more educated population, 
we're going to have a much better Jamaica. So we are going to be playing our part by investing in education. Well, looking forward to hearing about the initiative and congratulations again on your win. Thanks a lot and thanks to the Jamaica Chamber of Commerce for recognizing Grace Kennedy. And that's it from us here at the 36th Annual Jamaica Chamber of Commerce Award Ceremony. Remember to keep it locked to Business Access TV, serious about business. Business current affairs you can relate to. Frank, credible discussion. On point with Kalila Reynolds and Dennis Chung. Dissecting the issues, offering solutions to Jamaica's challenges. On point. Thursdays at 8 p.m. on Business Access TV. It's season 12, and Wealth Magazine Business Access is here to keep you business savvy. With an impressive mix of some of Jamaica's most inspiring business moguls, we continue to keep Jamaica informed, empowered, and ready to dominate. Tune in Sundays at 5 p.m. only on BATV. You're watching Business Access. Business Access. Business Access. Business Access TV. Serious about business. I'm Kito Akwanza, co-founder and CEO of Island Eyewear. And I'm Jordan Akwanza, co-founder and COO of Island Eyewear. Island Eyewear started February 28, 2004. It was a small beginning. We didn't have uh, computers. We didn't have all the equipment necessary, but we had a lot of passion and a clear idea of what we wanted to achieve. I had some previous work experience as a youngster. I had, I had experience working in a syrup factory for one of my uncles. And then my other uncle uh, I work with, he's an ophthalmologist, so I, I end up working in, in, his, in his laboratory for some time, you know, summer, summer jobs and so. 
I ended up working for my mother. Um, she had a small store there um, in New Kingston called New Kingston Optical. We cater to everyone. We are so fortunate. We have products to feed everyone. We offer primary eye care. That is basically refractions to the eyes to determine if you need eyeglasses or not. We do offer complete lab service. We are one of the few optical companies in the island with a complete surfacing lab where we manufacture prescription lenses. Our customers are able to receive their eyeglasses within one hour, two hours, or 24 hours. We also have a wide variety of frames, varying from $1,400 to $5,900, and that is our factory direct collection designed to cater for everyone. And we also have brand names, very popular designer frames. We have a wide variety of prescription lenses. Sensation is one of our most popular brands um, of lenses that are photosensitive. They turn dark in the sun. We also offer upgrades as anti-reflective coating, polycarbonate, that are very, very popular and help to protect your eyes from things like glare and UV. The money came from an investor slash a business partner and um, family member. My mother had had some savings, just enough to, to get us started with the business. We had to prioritize when it comes to what to do with the money. I said the money wasn't that much. We basically did the renovations for the store with the, the cheapest material possible. We bought some uh, the important equipment, the ones that you can't do without. You know, in eye care, so you have to have the best equipment to deal with the eyes. Um, as as uh, Jordi mentioned, we, we didn't have computers because we, weren't in a, we didn't really need them at the time, just starting out. Without, um, without the, the profits, we wouldn't be able to grow as we have. We have recently been growing quite, quite far. We depend on, on the profits for that. We get requests um, through various portals. We get phone calls, we get requests on social media mainly. We also have a team um, that goes to several locations where we don't have stores to promote. And we just listen to the people and what the people want and where they want us. We recently opened um, a store in Moran Bay and the, our customer base in Moran Bay is just so lovely and, and they welcome us to, to the town and they were so happy to have us and we were so happy to be there to serve them. Our locations definitely help. We are very environmentally conscious. The environment is very important to us. Right now we have 13 locations and um, we look forward to continue growing and bringing more locations um, to every single parish in the island. With the popularity of the internet is being more easy for us to reach everyone who is interested and join our team. We have a website where persons submit the applications. After that, our HR manager, who is our right hand in the, in the hiring process with over 15 years of experience, goes through a selection based on qualifications, education, experience, interpersonal skills, and the ability to be able to change, evolve, and be a team player. Each employee um, understands that they're not only responsible for, for their own success, but the success of a fellow employee. We encourage employees to become shareholders, to, 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 them, to encourage this, this, this culture of solidarity. In fact, there are probably over 10 current shareholders of the company that are employed to the company. On a typical day, being a couple, we work together, we live together, we start our day very early. Um, we head to the office and we have children that we have to take to school. Uh, you'll be surprised, but some, some days we don't even see each other because he's dealing with a section of the business and I'm working with a, another part of the business. So we will head to our headquarters and I will run over um, all the different things that happened the day before and what we need to achieve for that day. And that has to do with operations. And, yeah. Um, um, yeah, I mean, basically, we really have nobody. We don't have the luxury of somebody to tell us 
uh, remind us of what is to be done in a given day. So we have to really have, have um, a, certain, a certain discipline and presence of mind and alertness about what we're trying to achieve. Mm -hmm. um, we have to try to prioritize um, for, for each day because you know you can become overwhelmed by a lot, by a lot of different things. Yeah. Basically, we start at. 9 to 6 p.m. Mondays to Fridays and 10 to 3 p.m. on a Saturday and we adjust it from there after we have gotten a feedback from our customers and get a better feel of the area that we are located at. Being an entrepreneur has its ups and downs um, like everything else in life. <clears throat> I mean it, it, it's quite encouraging when you see people go um, people you have met uh, grow in, in, a, in a positive um, direction and it, it, um, the, the disappointments are often um, also when you see people take um, you know, the bad direction. The fact is that being an entrepreneur you have a lot of encounters with people. You, you meet a lot of people um, yeah. <clears throat> as you try to build a team. So you, you, you probably are, you're going to end up with, um, with, with, with more instances of this thing encouragement and also disappointment. It has, a, it, it has affected us in a positive way where we have a bigger reach to people and we're able to make a bigger impact on persons that we encounter in life, whether it's through the business or whether it's through offering them the, uh, the service that we're here to offer. And it also has, in some way, had a little of a downfall because we don't get the family time that we ideally should have it's that balance work family work life it doesn't really exist that, um, that you know we don't really visualize it um, so it's just being able to spend more family time together that we have been missing but hopefully as time goes along and our team grows and we're able to delegate more we'll be able to enjoy that side of being an entrepreneur as well which is the ideal freedom of time There's only one recommendation for funding that is ever going to come from me, and that is funding from a bank. This is the cost to build, and it includes every nail and screw for the building. Our motto is building communities, building a nation. Get in the know with the world of real estate with Business Access TV's Home Sweet Home, Sundays at 4.30 p.m. This is Weekend Business Report. Economic windfall. Unsecured loans. Alleged corruption. Turn along that closure. If they made this investment. This broker's risk. Drive to increase revenues. He sought some answers. Financial meltdown. Here are the week's final Here's Garth. News Roundup. Camille. 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 It's back to you. That's Weekend Business Report with me, Camille Gale. Saturdays and Sundays. very aware of our surroundings and we take from everything and we are very open-minded to everything so we might get suggestions from um, from a customer that come into the store and we will just go ahead and and, and apply it, implement it to our <laughs> business. And we also hear from our team members. They are the, the most valuable asset that we have. And when it comes to giving us feedback and ideas on how to um, be more efficient, we have found throughout the years that the best way to build a successful customer uh, base is through customer service. Once the customer service is perfect, once we're able to delight our customers, they will be our customers for life. Also, giving back to the community has proven very effective to building our customer base. One of the challenges that it don't really stop us from our um, well, from what we want to achieve, um, and I'm sure every single entrepreneur in Jamaica is facing this, is the lack of trust 
and the lack of support from lending companies. If you have a business, it is very difficult to find support from lenders. Even though we didn't depend on them, it would have helped us reach more people. Um, apart from, from, from that, um, also the fact that Jamaica is not equipped with schools for our field. There is no schools to educate people on how for, for optometry um, based jobs. That's another challenge that, yes, that, yeah. that we face. But then again, we don't let challenges stop us from what we want to achieve and how we want to do it. We always find our ways to be able to bring service to customers. So we have taken profitability from our company to grow our business. We have um, apply intensive training to our teams to help them learn more and educate more so we offer a perfect service to our customers. As an entrepreneur, there are no failures. You fail when you stop. There's, there's no way to prevent mistakes. We try our best, but mistakes will always happen. Um, how you deal with the mistakes, though, is, is, is really what it's really what tells what you're all. It's really it, it, it's what tells what you're all about. Um, if you are willing to stand behind your mistakes and correct them, um, <clears throat> I, I, I mean, I've seen Jordy done so much in that regard. Um, you know, whenever we drop the ball, and uh, we, we we're, we're ever so <clears throat> we're ever so uh, understanding of the fact that there is somebody who is affected by this mistake. Yeah. And they don't really, they don't really, they're not going to sympathize with, 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 with our shortfalls. So we just have to, we have to make it right. Yeah. I mean, Jody can so tell you more with, about that. With, with mm -hmm. the damage control now, we start from insertion. We, we start from the core. We start from the moment that we select the frames that we're going to offer to our customers. We have to make sure that they are of the best quality and also of the best price so that this frame can outlast one year of wear so that it doesn't break rigorous on the wear. of rigorous wear mm -hmm. and exposure to mm -hmm. very high temperatures in this country. Um, so from, from, from the core, from the selection process up to the delivery, we use every single step as damage control. If by any chance anything was to happen and we know that things can go wrong, we always work with our customers. The satisfaction of our customers is our priority. And we always go above and beyond to keep them happy, to make sure that they are satisfied. We prefer to put people, our customers, over our profits. So even if it may represent a loss to the company, we always go above and beyond for them. Our growth strategy is, is pretty simple. We grow towards our customers. First of all, we make it very well known what we do. And then we start getting requests. Oh, do you guys have a store here? Do you guys have a store there? We listen. Um, as the, 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 requests, uh, the requests pile up, we grow towards those requests. <clears throat> um, for long term now, um, we, we, have, we have just um, implemented our plan um, to, um, to achieve energy independence for our company. We began um, installing solar panels. Um, in fact, some of our laboratories <coughs> already run on them. Um, one of our labs, our main lab, runs solely on solar power, so we are off the grid. And we plan to achieve this um, over the long term. Every store, every, every, every part of our process will be off the grid. Part of our, uh, our plans to make sure that we are um, here very long, and when, I, and when I say long, I mean even after um, we are not around, is to make sure that our teams and everyone coming after that shares our view and understand why we are here and what we want to achieve so that they can carry on our vision. We don't want island eyewear and what we're doing and how we're doing it to end with us. We want it to carry on for generations to come.
So we use all the conventional mediums of advertising, television, radio, billboards. In 2010, when um, the internet started to get more popular, we started using social medias and uh, so social media platforms and the internet. Um, it has worked out very um, positively for us, but up to date, the most effective way of advertising our business is through customer service. Delighting our customers through service is the main way to get a satisfactory campaign out there. You could have the best commercial, you could have the prettiest billboard out there. Once the customer comes to the store, the service is not up to standard, then you wasted your time, your effort, and your money in vain. So customer service, delighting our customers, smiling to them, being transparent with them, educating them, supporting them, and through encouragement to our customers, we have achieved a very, very successful marketing strategy. I believe that the best formula is through hard work and perseverance, never giving up. Accepting no as an answer and turning every downfall or mistakes as a school to learn and help you achieve and get where you want to go. Once you have a clear reason, well you, once you have um, a clear understanding of what you want to do, why you want to do it, and how you're going to do it, then you are definitely set to be successful. Success comes from within. <clears throat> Success is much like happiness. No one can decide how happy you are in any one moment. You decide that. It comes from within your own brain, your own, mi your own, your own mindset, um, regardless of what, what is happening around you. If you feel successful, you are successful. One of my fears is not being able to deliver. I, um, I am not originally from here. English is my second language. Um, so not have been gone to official training on how to run a business, not having that wide educational background that most people in business do, I sometimes fear um, not being able to deliver a task that I'm presented with, which, which I find challenging. But then right away, I remember where I'm coming from. I remember where I am right now. And I use that as a storm to, to bring me forward and achieve that. So right there and then, I just forget everything, carry on and succeed. As the end of the year draws nigh and the celebrations begin, let us add some magic to the festivities with our BATV Christmas mix. Why settle for blah when you can have fa la 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 la? 60 advertising spots, 10 crawl spots. This $1.6 million package is all yours for only $45,000. Don't wait. Contact our sales team today and take advantage of this incredible offer. Our gift to you. BATV Christmas Mix. Offer valid until December 31, 2018. Having a corporate event, seminar, awards show, conference, products launch, workshop, or expo? Business Access TV is here to showcase your event. Contact our sales department at 9080919, 9066357, or 9082775 for more information. Business Access TV, serious about business. One of the things that motivates me the most is being able to touch people's lives, the persons who are around us every day, from our team members to our customers, being able to touch everyone and make an impact on our community from the ground up. I find motivation from the, the, the persons from every works of life that visit our stores, that we are helping and we are assisting. My greatest inspiration is my husband. Ever since we met, he has inspired me to always be a better person. And throughout the years, he has achieved that. I always look up to him for everything. 
I think as an entrepreneur, my greatest inspiration um, comes from fellow entrepreneur Marcus Garvey. What he was able to achieve coming from humble beginnings. The services that we offer, the products that we offer, these are, these are items that you can basically find anywhere else, but you will never find them with the heart that Island and we are offer them to you. We all have a very clear understanding of why we're doing what we're doing and how we are going to do it. So when you come to Island Eyewear, it's not just the ambience of the store where you will find attractive. It's not just the smiling team members ready and willing to serve you, but it's the passion behind all of that. It pours out on what we do. My favorite aspect of being an entrepreneur is being able to touch people's lives to have access to so much people and make a positive impact in them on every single person that I meet, whether it is um, somebody that we're doing um, business with or a customer, just being able to have access to such amazing people that can inspire me and that I can inspire them in return is just one of my favorite things about being an entrepreneur. The success of Island Eyewear is attributed to hard work, passion, and teamwork. Well, one of my most satisfying moments I could remember, I could recall, is when we, we just successfully set up our first laboratory. Um, when we started this business, we didn't have our own lab, so we had to um, use out, uh, outsource um, lab work. Um, so when I, when I decided to do that, and we actually did it. Middle of doing some second fixes on the plumbing, we have gotten a significant amount of the external plumbing work done. We have put in the manholes, and we have put in our septic tank, and we are now preparing to make our connections to the NWC system. In terms of the internals, um, we have started putting in some mixers for the showers and we are preparing to start um, doing additional fixtures on the plumbing, which is the third fix. We'll be bringing in the tiles. Those are pretty much at the wharf now to be cleared off and to be brought to the site. So those again will be done in a few days' time. So where we are now is pretty much moving into the finishes. So the windows, the doors, the tiling, the painting, and other fixtures, the lighting fixtures, um, the ceiling fans, the air conditioning units, um, in terms of the bathrooms, the vanities, pedestals, the water closets, and the tubs and the jacuzzis for the units that will have jacuzzis as well. Um, so we are now pretty much still ahead of schedule, moving along quite smoothly. And we're looking to get everything wrapped up ahead of schedule, of course. So in terms of the activities now, things have slowed a bit on the heavy side, but we are now more into the logistics aspect of doing the finishes. Our interior designer has an extensive amount of experience um, working in the hotel industry. And the truth is that that's the type of finish that we're looking to, to bring a luxurious finish, right? Um, so we assign the interior designer to each purchaser upfront to literally go through the details of what the purchaser wants. So somebody may wish for a darker kitchen with lighter floors, or somebody may want a particular room in their favorite color. We have to look at how the fixtures that are being put in will impact the look of that. We also look at the layout of the rooms, the positioning of your chandelier, for example, over your dining table, um, how your air conditioning units are positioned in the rooms. Um, is also something that we are now at the point that we can do final adjustments. Because some persons do not like when that air 
cold air is blowing directly on them. So we have the positioning of those worked out in our details. So the purchasers now are enjoying the ability to tailor their units to their liking. We will, of course, move along to finish the other units and hopefully we do the type of finish that is still appealing to an average buyer. In terms of the teams that are working now, um, there are certain trades that are 